Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. We are out in the old guy's shed, kicking off a brand new project from the video title. You'll probably see that we are making a CLC boats, that's Chesapeake Lightcraft Boats, Passage Maker Take Apart Dinghy. So before we get going on that, I wanted to just say a quick shout out to my Minecraft fans and wanted to ask you guys if you know anybody that's a DIYer, that likes doing woodwork, maybe somebody that likes sailboats, maybe sailing, boating, that kind of stuff. If you could point them to this video, I'd really, really appreciate it. Not sure when we're going to be back to Minecraft videos, if I'm going to split the channel off or what we're going to do there. Uh, but for now, for the uh, near future, we're working on this project and probably put the Minecraft videos on hold. So anyways, there you go. For, uh, so first off, for the uh, reason I wanted to, to, to build the, a boat, this, this passage maker take apart thingy, I was looking for a boat that was versatile, something I could do some sailing on, something that you could row fairly easy, something that had a boat, uh, a boat that had a motor on it, um, there you could put a motor on it. And uh, something that was easy transport, uh, transporting, I didn't want something that I had to have a trailer for. I'd rather have something I could throw in the back of my pickup truck, get over to the intercoastal, and, and do some stuff on the water out there. So uh, started looking at stuff, went through a couple of different uh, places, and ended up with uh, Chesapeake Lightcraft boats. And they had a couple of different thing, options there. Um, that, I, that I had to choose between, <laughs> and, and uh, so I, I settled on this this passage maker. But let's let let's let's back up just a little bit there. We'll go inside on the computer here, and I'll and I'll walk you through some of my thought process, and then we'll be back out here and get going with uh, unboxing the kit. All right, then. So here we are at the uh, Chesapeake Lightcraft website, and so. I uh, already gone over what I was looking for in a uh, boat. And so here we, um, from uh, this Chesapeake Lightcraft, I, I think they're probably the best kit type of boats. Um, they're a little expensive, uh, but they seem to have everything pretty well, well figured out and seem to provide uh, good, good support. So this is what I, uh, this is my first source. I did look at other sources, other kit boats, and nothing really tripped my trigger um, other than this Chesapeake Lake Craft. So the first one up here is Eastport Nesting Pram and uh this would fit the bill except it's only seven feet nine uh inches long and has you know you could fit two people in there um and uh it, it but but still it's it's a little bit smaller than what i wanted uh the weight it's good and then if you got the uh, take apart the uh, nesting yeah the nesting here i'm sure it's uh, almost half so be real easy manageable to uh, move around but again it's just a little bit too small down here they have something kind of neat this dashboard of how uh, how it does so uh, pretty stable pretty good uh, between rower and sailor transport you know put it right on the car top payload uh, more of a day tripper ease of construction looks like it's really easy to build so if this was uh you know something that i just uh, really wanted to uh, just get my feet wet and kick around in a little bit this would be a good option the other good thing about this is the cost now these prices have gone up some since the beginning of the year but they're still you know for what you get i think it's still good value the other boat that I had considered was this PT-11 nesting and I and to be honest with you this is the one I wanted this I this is the one I was all set to build and I, was, I said told everybody yep I'm building it and and then I got looking at it and uh, down here the uh, there's a statement down here somewhere uh, hold on let's see if I can find it uh, somewhere along here this says uh, for the assembly that this is uh, pretty pretty advanced uh, right here PT is 11 is not for everyone uh, small wooden boat with this level of performance requires a degree of patient craftsmanship and willingness to pay attention to details uh, yeah I could probably do it um, but the uh, 
when they say that, that also means that it's going to take more time. So, you know, I, I've got time, but I, I'm not that patient. <laughs> I've, I waited, I've done a lot of stuff to get to this point where I could build one of these and now I'm kind of ready to just get at it. All right, and so here, building a PT-11 is like taking a master class in epoxy skills. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know, I, I really like the boat. I think if, um, you know, if, if, if I was looking at this and uh, really long term, kind of thing this is this is the boat I'd get the, the other downside to this boat though uh, besides how much effort it takes to make the cost is considerably higher I think it's almost 30 or 40 percent higher than the passage maker so that was the other reason why I decided not to build this is, is the the complexity of it and the higher cost so this is the one i got is the passage maker take apart i think they, they i think they don't call it a nesting because it, it doesn't really quite nest inside each other it's kind of kind of sticks up a little bit there but it's uh it's got the same general idea of uh taking taking it apart and being able to put it together now the part that i'm hoping about and that really didn't get a good answer i don't think or if, I'm not even sure if I asked the question. So it weighs 94 pounds together. So that that would be just right at the limit of something I'd want to move around. But I'm hoping that it's more like the main part here is closer to 50 to 60 pounds. And the bow is maybe 30 to 35 pounds. So that would be something I probably wouldn't struggle with too much. Be a little bit heavy, but could get it in and out of the truck without a problem. The other part is if we come down here to the dashboard kind of thing they've got down here. So it's really stable, a little bit better sailor than a rower. Um, transport options, yeah, you, you probably won't put this on a car top. Maybe you could if you had two people, um, but I'm going to throw it in the back of my truck. So that's not really a, a big problem. Big, uh, it's got some really good payload uh, and also the ease of construction is, is while it's not quite as easy as the nesting, Eastport nesting pram, uh, it's not quite at the level of the PT-11. The other thing is of course the cost. So yeah, the cost was um, uh, quite a bit lower. So I did get the base kit and the uh, sailing component kit and also what else did I get? I think I got some of these other things. I think I got the uh, sail package. And I got some oars too. I got these uh, oars down here too. So yeah, so I got the whole sailing package and the oars is, should be uh, should be part of this whole this whole setup. So yeah, so that's why I wanted to uh, uh, show you, and this is what we'll uh, be looking to build. Okay, so there you go. That's why I picked this passage maker take apart thingy. Um, so one thing, but so before we get to the unboxing, a couple other things I wanted to mention. I'll be doing at least one video a week. I'm not really sure how many uh, videos this series is going to take. I've never done this before, so we're going to play it by ear. I'm thinking, kind of thinking, eight to ten videos. Um, we may have some uh, spots where we do more than one video a week. Uh, maybe spots where we're a little bit late, but we'll have to we'll play it by ear. Uh, the big thing though is if you want to follow along, make sure you're subscribing and hit that notification bell because I'm going to try to keep it pretty. Uh, once I get into once I get into the schedule and and uh, uh, figure out what we're doing, I'll try to keep it to the same time each week. Uh, but you never know. You never know how things play out and everything. So like I said, make sure you're hitting that subscribe and that notification bell to see how we we're progressing in this series. And, and, and like I said, it's going to be real time. So this is my first boat I built and this is the first time I've used epoxy uh, in a big project like this. So uh, I'm doing this real time. I'm hoping we're going to get some good feedback, some good interaction in the comments to these videos to maybe point me in the right direction if I get off sidetracked or uh, let me know what you think about how I'm how I'm doing things. So I um, want to get that out there. I think that's about it. Um, I, I'm kind of, yeah, I was, I'll just touch on this briefly. So I looked, 
you know, went and looked online for uh, passage maker uh, dinghy builds, and all the ones I found were these time lapse of people, you know, zip, 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 zip around, and and I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I guess that's kind of a general overview, but I, I'm kind of a, I need some details, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I, I. I did see one, uh, a PT-11 by, uh, there's a video series, PT-11 build by Orc Boats. Now, that's a, that was a pretty good one, um, but for uh, most everything else, they're just, they're either really old uh, or they're just a bunch of time lapses. And I'm going to try not to do that. I'm sure there will be some time lapses, um, but I'm going to try to walk through the steps. Uh, we can talk about some of the different things maybe we'll do some things different maybe maybe i'll make some big mistakes and and uh then uh, you'll at least know not to make those same mistakes so anyways let's go ahead and get to the unboxing here got lots to do so let's get at it all right then ran into some uh, technical difficulties but i think i got it figured out um so we'll see how this goes uh, so anyways we've got on that side over there, we've got the uh, sailing component stuff. So I'll I'll save that for last. I'll probably just open it up, take a quick look, and then we'll put it away somewhere safe because I don't think I'll need much out of the sailing component kit. Um, but here we've got the uh, first, the one of two for the passage maker and the other one's underneath. So let's get this thing open and hopefully we'll get everything we need. Alrighty, got some tape. Well, they sure do a heck of a job packaging this up. There is tape all over everything. <coughs> the uh, <coughs> The one thing I was hoping to find in package one of two was, was the instructions. But uh, looks like this is all the, is a good deal of the wood here. It's pretty nice pieces. All right, so we'll put this, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. I'm gonna unload this up onto this workbench here. Um, and uh, kind of get it organized a little bit, I think. I'm gonna have to, I guess I didn't really think this through. How, where am I gonna put all this stuff? Um, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, let me, uh, let me pause here and I'll get the, uh, I'm gonna get this just moved off the side and then we'll open up the other one. All right, then here is two of two. That's what we were looking for. Here we go. This is the good stuff. All right. All right. There we go. This is uh, <laughs> this. Uh, I was thinking about this later. After I placed the order, I was like, hmm, it's kind of weird that they don't email you a PDF of this once you buy it, or at least once it ships or something, so that you have a uh, something to review and something that you can start going over. So here's the, it's got the parts list in it. 
sailing components. Yep, so we'll have to, uh, probably going to take most of the rest of today to go ahead and sort this stuff out, read through the manual once, and uh, then work on a little bit better plan of attack. Let's see what we got here. Oh, so we got the fiber. Oh, that's what we got to do, too, is open up the... Uh, fiberglass uh, epoxy kit. Just a big wad of, uh, of fiberglass and some hardware. Looks like we got some pretty good stuff here. Lots of copper wire for doing the uh, Stitching and glue. Good deal, good deal. Let me grab that uh, epoxy box. It's sitting right back here. Oh, all kinds of stuff here. We got some, uh, got the pumps. Got some. Wood flower, a lot of wood flower here. Got four of these things of wood flower, it looks like. And it's like uh, two of these big things of epoxy resin and then at least one hardener. I'm pretty sure they gave me the slow. I hope anyways, because it's going to be hot here. <laughs> so, so we're going to have to... Uh, um, uh, have the slow hardener for sure. So, yep, so good. So uh, I was wondering about a couple things and that answers it. So I'll go ahead and get this stuff organized, get the manual read, at least a quick once over, and then we'll uh, be back and uh, see if we can get a little bit of a start on this this week. All right, let's get this uh, sail making component kit open just so that I know what else I got here. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? <clears throat> All right, yep, so that's what I thought. The um, rudder and Dagger board and that kind of stuff is in here, along with the uh, mast and sails. Uh, nice aluminum mast. And the gear. So, yep, good. Good deal. I'll have to probably... Uh, not sure how I'm going to do this yet. A little overwhelming right now, but uh, we'll uh, figure it out here. Um, I do know in the number one box there are all the puzzle pieces, and that's those are the ones that need to go next or first. So I think I'll go ahead and get those all sorted out, find a spot for the rest of the stuff, and then uh, uh, we can get that, get that going and see what that's about. Okay, then it's another day out here in the old guy's shed. And uh, before we get going, I wanted to apologize for the unboxing uh, portion of the video from uh, yesterday. I thought I had the orientation right, and when I tried to switch it back, it, it just didn't look right. So I left it as it was and um, wanted to uh, uh, make sure you. I'll, I'll try to do better in the future. So anyways, um, got a, it's bright and early this morning, so uh, got out here and got a few things done, got it a little bit more cleaned up, and uh, uh, took a look at the instructions last night. So I think we're uh, ready to start really getting going here today uh, a little bit <laughs> first. Um, and I think these uh, essential tools and supplies, I think they actually provided these on the website. I just didn't pay much attention to them because I wanted to see what I actually needed to do before um, 
before I went and ordered a bunch of stuff. Now the, the thing that I did need to do was to get some, uh, I, I have the router, um, but I need to get some roundover bits. And also in here, uh, they do require a one eighth inch roundover bit. So I did need to get some roundover bits, got them from Amazon. They should be here today. I think most of the other stuff I had or was able to get here locally, uh, except for, oh, the, um, the darn, uh, the darn foam rollers. Yeah. So I've got some of those on order. Um, actually I ordered nine inch. I'm going to cut them down, I think, and use them as four inch, um, because they're pretty darn expensive. <laughs> so, so anyways, hopefully that works. But anything, anyways, we've got a bunch of stuff coming today from Amazon. So, uh, we should be able to be rocking and rolling here. Now, um, in the meantime, I do have quite a bit of work here to do on these puzzle joints. We have, um, you can see pretty good. There's some tear out here, a little bit of tear out. And then the, uh, 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 these puzzle joints needed to be cleaned up. And then these, these rabbits are looking a little bit rough. So I'll probably just take some 120 sandpaper to these. Uh, the good thing is, is they do, they do label these. So, um, here we've got number one port stern and number one port bow. So as long as the labels don't fall off, I should be pretty good to get, uh, get these, uh, going and, uh, shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have too much problem keeping them in the right order. So I've got number one, uh, here on the bench. I'll start working on those. And then I've got, uh, I've got two, three, and four there. And then I've got the, uh, the bottom uh, section here, the both the aft and the stern bottom section here, that'll probably also need some work done on those uh, those puzzle joints down there and the ends of those. So we need to clean those up. I did set up a nice little uh, epoxy station over here, put some plastic down, got all the stuff there I think I need for now. Um, I did I did get some uh, plastic cups. I got the uh, the clear ones um, so that so that I, I noticed uh, in the instructions they want different um, uh, they say you know mix up four four ounces of epoxy or six ounces as well I'm so bad at, <laughs> at trying to gauge amounts and everything um, so I've got this I got the clear cups and I've got it marked where uh, four ounces six ounces and eight ounces are so now I should have a little bit better idea when I use the clear cups to mix up the epoxy on how much I actually have there. So, so that'd be good. And I do have some bigger cups if I need it, um, but I think that'll work good. I got some cheap freezer bags for doing the piping. Um, like I said, I've got the plastic down. Now in the instructions, they do say um, that they recommend putting some sawhorses down and then some uh, uh, big plywood area. Uh, the problem is, is I don't really have, uh, that big of a room here in the shop. And also I don't really want to go out and buy plywood just for that, just for a, a big bench like that. I do have some plywood back over in the corner. I might be able to rig up, uh, uh, some, something on saw horses, but even though they say your back and knees are going to be bothered, I'm just going to do them on the floor. I, I think, I think that's just for this, the puzzle glue up here. Um, I think doing it on the floor, it may be a little bit painful, but that's what I'm going to try to do. So anyways, I got lots to do. I'll clean up the uh, puzzle joints today and uh, get ready for the glue up. Um, probably not going to glue, do the gluing today. We'll probably do that tomorrow, but we'll see. Anyways, we'll be back in a little bit and uh, show you, uh, show you where we're at. All right, then I got the uh, first uh, set done and um just wanted to show you a few things so this uh this rabbit edge here is uh pretty gnarly it seems like uh, the best thing to do i've got this sponge sponge sander i write what the grid is on it <laughs> at the ends that's just something i do um but anyways yeah so uh along this <clears throat> the outer edge there's some some fibers that just seem to sometimes get stuck there and then every once in a while i haven't made a lot of sense of it but you can see there's a, a one of the little nubs from the cnc machine so the best thing i found to do is to try to whittle it down a little bit with a 
exacto now they don't they, they don't say to do this in the in the instructions but uh, uh trying to sand that down with just sandpaper all the way seems kind of goofy to me so just took a take the exacto blade like a little chisel and uh it's not very big Try not to get too much tear out on it. And then once that's done, then hit it up with the sandpaper then to, to smooth out the last bit of it. Try not to sand any of the, uh, one of their instructions is don't sand the panel. So it's uh, really kind of hard to, <laughs> to get that. I was thinking about getting the Dremel tool out or something to, to really just have a lot more finer control over it. That's pretty darn close. Just a little touch there. All right, and then uh, usually go ahead and do the this rabbit next. Uh, the sponge seems to be works pretty good, except in this mouse kind of thing um, works pretty good too. Don't have to do it very strong or or a lot, but it, just a, a once over to give the uh, get rid of some of it, get rid of some of the loose fibers. These small ones are pretty easy to work with, being able to move them around. And then just at the uh, the other end, so at the uh, puzzle joint end, it seems like just a regular piece of uh, uh, 120 grit small sandpaper and just do it by hand here to clean up the, uh, the puzzle joint. And <laughs> before I forget, and I'll try to remember to say this a couple times, this is, a, this is by no means a, uh, this is exactly how you should do it video series. This is a, this is how the old guy's doing it. <laughs> so, so I'm not telling everybody this is exactly how you should do it. Um, just use your own, uh, your own skill set and your own knowledge and the directions. And, um, it doesn't look like it'll be that hard, but, uh, anyways, yeah. So this is, uh, this is just how I'm doing it. The last thing I like to do is go ahead and I've just got an old clean t-shirt here and then uh, just give it a wipe down and it's more of um, you know giving you a, a, another chance to look it over and see how it looks um, and, and anything else really so it's just uh, make sure you didn't miss anything any uh, any loose fibers and that kind of stuff. Then grab the next one. done with those long <clears throat> goofy pieces now I got these uh, these bigger pieces here to do take a quick look at them these should be uh, I got some knockouts here puzzle joints need cleaning up I don't see any of those tabs on that one anyway so keep on going Alrighty then, that's all those pieces. So let me go ahead and pause here and figure out what's next. 
Alrighty then, I think that's probably enough for one episode. We got quite a bit done. Got all my pile of puzzle pieces here that uh, we'll work on uh, figuring out how we're going to glue those up. But we'll go ahead and end this episode here. Um, today is Tuesday, the 28th of March, 2023. So probably not going to get a chance to get this video edited tonight and uploaded. So we'll go ahead and say Wednesday, March 29th will be when I'll have the uh, probably 5 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have this video go live um, and then we'll uh, uh, get going on uh, doing the glue up and whatever else is next on the on the list. So we do have uh, some some we got some epoxy stuff coming up and taking a look at some of the CLC boats procedures. Kind of wondering on uh, <laughs> which which is uh, if if just go ahead and follow it blindly or think about it a little bit and and maybe modify a little bit of a few of the steps. So, anyways, I'll I'll go back through the, uh, the manual here tonight, maybe tomorrow, and then uh, we'll take a look at the, the glue up of the puzzle pieces. That's probably pretty straightforward, but some of the other epoxy and then fiberglass and stuff they've got got us doing. I'm, little bit on the edge of uh, maybe making a few changes to that but we'll see um anyway so if you have any questions if you have any comments if you if you got any guidance for me on uh on things i could be doing better uh even with the the video and the editing um but mainly on the on the boat um anything i need to be doing different there uh make sure you leave a comment down below and I want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Make sure you're hitting that like button. Please leave me any comments, questions, suggestions down below. Please tell your friends about me. And please, please subscribe. Everyone, take care and be good.